Hey guys, Joseph, ABC Sewing Machines. Today we're going to be looking at the LZ2290C series from Juki. This is their top of the line uh, zigzag unit. It's a pattern zigzag unit. So you can do your standard single step zigzag, double step, three step, uh, cycle sewing, scallop stitches. You could program your own specialty type of stitch in here as well. So pretty much a lot of, uh, a lot of information to cover on this machine. Definitely download your uh, manual, scanning the QR code right here on the machine tag. You definitely want to look over the, the, the instruction book just to go over the, the how-tos and the how to um, you know maneuver through the panel a little bit more easier. A little bit more complex than the standard single needle, um, the DDL9000C. So definitely go through that book and, um, and uh, you know start it off the right way. Okay, so uh, this is a brand new machine. Uh, out of the box, we have a fully assembled. Couple things that you have to know. Um, you're gonna have tape covering certain areas of the machine. You have this little air vent cap. Definitely you wanna take that off uh, before you start running the machine, okay? Uh, the machine does not come with oil. It's gonna come with this 200 milliliter bottle of oil, which are a little dispenser. Okay, on a brand new machine, most people just dump the whole thing in there. You definitely don't need to do that. Uh, to start off, just start off with 100 milliliters. So about half of this bottle, remove this cap, fill it up, 100 milliliters. And then when you turn on the machine, you'll notice that uh, there's a little oil gauge. So it tells you when you've put just enough oil um, when you start. Okay, let's power this up. Okay. After the loading screen, you'll see the needle home position. All you got to do is tap anywhere on this screen. It'll automatically bring the needle to the home position and reset itself. Okay, we have our standard pattern. This is similar to the 9000 C series. Um, let's go ahead and remove this oil cap. Got to tilt this back. Just a little rubber plug, only for transport. Once you're ready, do not forget to take this off. If you leave this on, it will start, it's possible that you'll have oil leakage on the bottom side, okay? All right, so we fill up our oil into the dispenser, remove the oil cap, and right here on the screen, you're gonna see that little oil gauge window. Okay, when you first get the machine, it's going to be a um, kind of like an empty gauge, like an empty gas gauge. It'll turn red. Once you fill up to that halfway point or that 100 milliliter mark, it'll show you this screen here. Okay, so just to kind of prime the machine, get it going, you want to fill up a, a 100 milliliters. And then after, you could go ahead and fill it up a little bit more, um, you know, after you prime the machine. Okay, all right. So we're looking at the home screen here. Okay, same layout. You have your pattern buttons right here on the top left. Okay, we already have a couple preset patterns loaded into there. If you look at pattern number one, it's just a standard single step. We can see the style. Pattern number two is a double step or two step zigzag. Number three is a three step. Number four is uh, kind of like a curved uh, type of zigzag pattern. Five is just a standard single needle straight stitch. Six, just standard, and then we have our cycle program. So the cycle program is you can pretty much uh, customize your own type of stitch and put however many steps. So if the first set of uh, stitches, you want it to be a wide type of stitch, and then the next set you want it to be thinner, and then the next set thinner, and then back wide, you could go ahead and customize it from that way. Okay, so the layout, very, very similar to the little brother, the DDL9000C single needle. Okay, we're just going to go with the standard one. Most of the settings here are just about the same, except for the new zigzag width button, okay? So we still have our tacking functions, which we could just turn on, turn off. If we wanna make changes, we just hold down the attack button. Same thing shows me the tacking, how many times we want it to tack forward and back. And right here, we have a new button. This is gonna be what type of condensed stitch that you want, what kind of type of tacking do you want? Do you want the tacking to be the full width of your zigzag uh, uh, that you have set? Or do you want a nice, small, compact one and then starts off with the zigzag? Okay, so you have a lot of uh, range and a lot of options to kind of fine tune your garments. Okay, gonna escape out. 
Okay, right here, we have a lot more types of pattern stitches. Okay, so these are all the general stitches that are preloaded in there. You could play around with these, change the width, change the length, um, the condensed stitches. You have all access through this, through this screen here. Okay, all the different types of pattern stitches you can do. Okay. Right, right here we have what type of tacking that we plan to use. Okay, so just like the single needle, we have our standard tack. This is the most common one. It'll back to or start tack and then stitch and then end tack. The saw in line is a fixed stitch. So if I wanted to do, um, you know, cover like a, let's say we're sewing a label on and there's a little zigzag stitch on the edges. What's the length of it? The saw in line means that from beginning to end, if I put in 10 stitches, it'll go 10 stitches and stop. Okay, so play around with that one. This is going to be your bar tacking or just a standard tack type of function. So you could just have it go back and forth, back and forth in a tacking uh, uh, motion. This one here is if I have an actual shape. Let's say if I wanted to go around a different uh, shape, let's say like a pocket. So if I'm sewing down a pocket, you know, how many stitches from A to B? And then B to C, C to D, uh, D to E. So you could program that on this, uh, the polygon shape type of stitch. And this one here is going to be your custom, your own type of uh, program pattern that you're going to, that you can uh, load into the machine. Okay. So we're just going to go with the standard one. Okay. All the settings are just about the same. We have our speed, machine speed at the 4,000. This is our tension, the press of foot pressure, the width of the zigzag. So how wide do you want those zigzags to be? And the length, what length do you want it? The shorter the length, the more closer that zigzag will be, kind of like an embroidery satin stitch or something along those lines. Okay. If we hit that little, uh, the NO, the number and the little magnifying glass, it goes into all of the, uh, the settings that we're able to, um, all the settings and the, the options. This is going to be, um, you know, after it cuts, whether you want the knife to cut or not, uh, the needle in the down position, up position, a whole lot of settings that we can do and also a mirror type of function. Uh, this is going to be our uh, start position, whether you want it right there starting in the middle, on the left side, or the right side of the zigzag. So a lot, a lot of options on this machine. Um, so uh, don't get overwhelmed once you find your one pattern. Go through the book, go through this one time, make a special program, and then it'll, it'll settle in. Okay? All right, so let's, let's go over just the basics of the machine. Um, we'll go with uh, threading the unit. Okay, a couple little, little, little changes uh, from the single needle. So let's say we have our needle thread. It's gonna go straight up into the thread guide. Gonna come straight down in. Now this thread post, you have a little hole right here on the top side, okay? If you, if you use the thread trimmer, uh, then you want it to go into this top hole. Okay, it goes into the top hole and then back around back to front. Okay, if you do not use the thread cutter, you want this thread to just go straight in through the back hole. Okay, so back to front, swivel around, back to front. You're gonna bypass this little top portion here. After that, it's gonna go right to left, and then swivel back around, and then go back right to left. Go in between the two discs over the top, straight down. This one here, it's not a tension disc, it's just kinda of like a little, a little rail lip. You wanna get it inside of that lip, it starts at three o'clock, goes all the way around, back to three, back to nine, and then up over this take up spring. Okay, once it goes over the take up spring, inside the guide, underneath this arm, inside of this, uh, of this uh, little wiper piece right here, straight over, front to back. And from here, we can go ahead and slide this open just so you could see it. We're going to follow it along this channel. Once it follows it along this channel here, it's going to wrap itself up just like this over this little take up arm. Okay. From there, it's just going to go straight down to the back side. Right here into the guide. Front to back. The needle, the curve goes to the back side. So if the curve is on the back, Wherever the curve is, that's where it exit is. So we're threading the, the needle front to back. Okay. Okay, let's cover the bobbin case really quick. It's a different style of bobbin case here. 
tilt this back so you can see it. Right here, the bobbin case. It loads in from the back side. Lift up the tab, pull straight back. Okay, when you take the bobbin case out, you want to make sure the needle's in the highest position. Okay, we got a little more, a couple new things right here to show you on the bobbin case. I'm going to go ahead and take this out. Okay. So, my bobbin goes into the bobbin case clockwise. So when I pull the thread, it goes clockwise. It's going to swivel all the way around. It's going to go in through this first little cut comes out underneath this ten the, 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 the tensioner spring, the black one, and then it's going to go back in through the, the exit uh, slit. Okay, and then right here, we have three holes, one, two, and three. Okay, or A, B, C, A, B, C, I believe. Okay, so um, on your general sewing, you want it in this middle channel. Okay, that one's A, I believe, in the book. Okay. If you want a little bit more tighter tension, you want to go to the B, which is this uh, this longer one in the front, okay? And then the C is for special operations. I think it's uh, for specialty stitching or something along those lines. Okay, so majority of the times you're going to be in this middle channel. Okay, if you need a little bit more tighter tension, you're going to go to this beach section here, okay? So once you have that, you want about two inches more or less, two inches hanging off, and then you load this back into your bobbin case. Okay, so we're, we're just gonna do general sewing, so we're gonna go to the A, the middle one. Okay, this stays up, come straight back, and make sure you hear that pop. And now it's locked in place. Okay, we're gonna come back down. We tilted the head back so it detects it so you don't run the machine while the head is back in a in a not ready uh, mode. Okay, we're gonna turn this back on. Okay. So one of the cool features are these uh, these little hand switches that we have here. So on the other single needle, we had two options. We had your reverse button, and then we had that changeover button. Okay, so we have our standard reverse. We can swivel this down for easy access. Okay, or lift this up. Okay, the second one here, if you look at the screen when I push it, this is our changeover screen. Okay, so if you saw our single needle video, it goes over, you, within one program, you can, if you push this over, uh, the, the changeover button, you could have another set of uh, settings for a different weight within the same program. Okay, so definitely utilize this function. It's really lifesaver. Okay, and this third one here, if you look at that little green icon that turns on and off, okay, this is a mirrored stitch. Okay, so let's say for example, let's see here. Okay, let's say for example, if I'm sewing a, uh, let's say a tablecloth, okay? If I have a tablecloth, and let's say we're using that pattern stitch, it's going on the U, Okay, when I hit that mirror button, it will mirror the same design uh, opposite. Okay, so if you're stitching and then you have to turn, you utilize that mirror option if you need be to balance it out to have that even type of stitch going all the way around your garment. Okay, so the mirror stitch, very, very useful. Um, those are not the settings that you can kind of, uh, that you have to use. You could pre-program any one of these three buttons to whatever function that the machine allows you to do. Okay, pretty simple to do. Just gonna hit the M button. Okay, we go into the mode button or the menu list. We're gonna scroll down. Uh, actually, we're gonna hold down the menu button for three seconds to access that screen. You'll hear that extra little click. Now we have hand switch settings number 13. This is switch number one, number two, and number three. Okay, so number two is our changeover or the mirror. Okay, so you can change and program each one of these buttons to do any of these functions here. Let's say if you wanted it to slow down the stitch or you just wanted it to stitch one time forward, or if you wanted to engage a more condensed type of tacking, you could play around with this one. This is really, really useful to kind of customize it to, you know, the job that you guys are really um, uh, using and more convenient for you guys. to. So you have three buttons that you can pre-program to whatever uh, that you'd like. Okay. All right. 
So uh, the good thing about the uh, smart solution, Juki smart solution machines is we still have full capability of running it through our Juki app. Uh, this has to be an Android device, some sort of Android device along with the uh, NFC capabilities. Okay, so NFC, we turn that on. Okay, to turn it on the machine, you hold down the I button for a couple seconds. It'll show me the first screen. That's the first level. We need to go into the second level. So I'll hold down the I button. Normally it's about six seconds, I believe. Right here, number four, NFC terminal registration, enable or disable. We're gonna go ahead and enable that. Now we could just open up our Juki app. Okay, let's say for example, I have a, uh, a design that I wanna load in. We're gonna go and load from design. These are the machines that are compatible with the uh, smart solution. We're gonna go to LZ2290C. And from here, I have my preset programs that I have ready to go just in case something happens with the one on the machine. So let's say, for example, I want to load in a three-step zigzag program. Okay. Shows me all my settings, which I could change from here from uh, through the app. And then once I'm ready to send it to the machine, I hit NFC transmission. What pattern number do you, what program number do you want to save it as? So we'll select a new one. If you're saving over an existing one, make sure to hit that overwrite button. Okay, we're going to hit done. And then go ahead and make contact with your, uh, with your NFC panel right here. And then it will go ahead and register that new design, pattern number seven. Okay, so you have full capabilities of editing whatever you wish on the, on the app and just send it directly to the machine if this is more easier for you to utilize and maneuver than the actual machine itself. Okay, so I just wanted to go over just some of the features, you know, the threading, uh, a little bit different from the single needles and some other machines. So I just wanted to cover that with you. But very, very solid machine. This is a uh, manufactured in Japan. So this is a very high-end durable machine. Now this is more for the lighter side of uh, the fabrics. So if you need to sew denim or anything along those lines, might not be the right fit. We can calibrate it. It's not going to be ready out of the box for that type of setup without some sort of adjustment. So just be wary on that. Make sure uh, you know and wherever you're getting the machine from, it is calibrated for the fabric that you want to do. This machine comes standard with a size 10 needle. Okay, so more on the lighter side. Uh, this one is going to um, uh, uh, a dance studio. So they use a lot of spandex, a lot of uh, mesh, uh, a lot of stretchy fabrics. So we set this up for that size 9, 10, 11 needle. Okay, so very important making sure your machines are calibrated for that and um, you still have the options of changing your feed dog stroke, um, a lot more customization that you can do and implement a lot more settings. So um, yeah, just make sure that these are already programmed for the type of jobs that you do. Okay, so hopefully this video helps. Very, very solid machine, uh, LZ2290C and this is the full digital version which is our favorite over here. And um, yeah, if you have any questions, feel free to give us a call and then we'll help you out. Take care.